We take insurance out for our car. Uh, we take life insurance out just in case something might happen to us. You know, but what about insurance for the soul? The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he will not enter the kingdom of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, and when we invite Jesus into our life, it's like um, we're guaranteed a place with God in heaven. But when we don't acknowledge God and invite Jesus into our life, the Bible says that we're not guaranteed a place because it says that we must be born again. Unless we're born again, we'll not enter the kingdom of God. See, God loves us so much that while we were still sinners, he sent Jesus to die on a cross. The Bible says, Greater has no love than this, than a man would lay his life down for his friends. Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. And Jesus decided to give his life up for you and for me. And he, he hung on that cross and he was bleeding. They tortured him, they spat at him, they humiliated him and they killed him. And just before he died on that cross, he says, Father, forgive them, he said, for they know not what they are doing. And he went to that terrible death of torture that we might have salvation, that we might be uh, redeemed from the curse of the law that we might be washed in the precious blood of Jesus. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. And Jesus bled on the cross that you might be washed, that I might be washed. And the blood of Jesus brings salvation. There's no name on the earth, under the earth, on the planet, no other name that we might be saved. Only the name of Jesus can save us. Because God loves us so much that he allowed Jesus to bleed for us on the cross. And while he was bleeding, he was thinking of you. He was thinking of me. The Bible says that God knew us before the foundation of the world. He thought about us before the foundation of the world. And he purposed that we would live. But he purposed that one day we would live with him in heaven for eternity. You know, when we take insurance out, we, we think we're covered. You know, and, we, and our family are covered if we take insurance out in our life and we should die today. Our families are covered with their uh, finances. They're covered with their, uh, you know, assets like homes and houses and different things. But what about us if we don't know Jesus as our personal saviour? If we do not know Jesus as our personal saviour, we will not enter heaven. There's no other way to God except through Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, and we must go through Jesus. And the only way we can go through Je to, uh, to, to the Father is through Jesus. We need to receive Jesus' forgiveness. We need to receive the salvation that comes through the cross. And the salvation that comes through the cross is through Jesus. You all right, mate? Jesus bled you okay? that we might have life. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of unrighteousness. And we've all sinned. The Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but he's not righteous. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal through Christ Jesus. And you can have eternal life today. You can be guaranteed a place in heaven today if you invite Jesus into your life. Jesus bled on that cross for you. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. The Bible says that Jesus, when he was on the earth, the demons on his own did not receive him. Have you heard of have you heard what of Sari Bukhari? Him, uh, he has given Bukhari? the rise of the sons yeah. of God, Bukhari. not born of human origin, not yeah. born as we are born with parents and mother, with father and mother, but born supernatural. You need that supernatural birth. Every single one of us have got inside. But we need to acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And when we acknowledge that Jesus died and we ask God to forgive us and we invite Jesus into our hearts, the Spirit of God comes to life and there's a rebirth, there's a spiritual awakening. There's something that takes place on the inside and the Spirit of God comes alive inside. 
And unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. For the wages of sin is death. You know where uh, I was 24 years of age when he asked Jesus to live my life. And so all I used to do was uh, party all the time, take drugs and party, and sometimes commit crime. And a friend of mine that was in partners in crime with and taking drugs, one day he was on the street like I'm on the street today and he told me, he said, Brendan, he says, I don't do drugs anymore. I don't do crime anymore. He said, I must Jesus in my life. He says, Jesus loves you. He said, come to church. And I went to church on the Saturday. We had a meeting on the Saturday. I went to church on the Saturday. And I remember the pr uh, preacher preached the message. And it went straight over my head. And then they started to play gospel music in the church. And they started to cry. And uh, I felt embarrassed because I didn't really know any, anybody, only my friend Billy. And I sat in the back of the church crying. And I, I, I tried to wrestle with what was taking place. I was trying to wrestle with God. I tensed every muscle in my body and I gripped my teeth. And I was in my, in, my, in my mind, I was saying, no, no. And the more I wrestled with God, the more he broke me, the more I cried. And the pastor said, would anybody like to invite Jesus into the life? And at first I ignored him. And then he said again, would anybody like to invite Jesus into the life? And I put my hand up and I said a sinful prayer. I said, dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I ask you God to forgive me of my sins. I invite Jesus into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. And this young guy, I've got uh, tear traps there down my face, and this young guy says, uh, how do you feel? I said, ah, don't feel anything. Because I didn't realise that something supernatural had taken place until a few moments later. And the pastor of the church, he said to me, he said, Brendan, he says, I'm going out to the shop. He says, uh, let me buy you a can of pop and uh, a marathon. So I said, okay. And I stepped out the building, and as soon as I stepped out the building on the step, it was a summer's day, and it was there. Uh, the street lamps was just coming up. And I felt a tremendous peace inside that no trip has ever took me. And I felt a tremendous peace inside that no alcohol has ever took me. And I felt like I was high, in, high floating because I'd, I'd been filled now with some, something supernatural. And I said to this pastor, he says, I'm not well. He said, what do you mean you're not well? He says, I feel like, I, f I feel happy and I feel like I'm, I'm on a high. I said, I feel like I just stepped into a, br a brand new life. The grass was so green. The leaves was green like I've never seen before. And everything was colourful to me. And I was sharing to the pastor, everything's colourful. And everything feels different. And I said, I feel like I just stepped into a brand new life. So Brendan, he said, you have, he said, the old is gone. He said, the new has come forth. He said, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And today I want to tell you that we can be a new creation in Christ Jesus. That the old man, the old sinful nature, can die in Jesus. And we can be resurrected by the superpower of the Holy Ghost when we invite Jesus into our life. That we don't have to carry the shame. We don't have to carry the burdens. We don't have to carry the guilt. We don't have to carry that sin around in our body. Because that day when I invited Jesus into my life, I felt as though somebody lifted a millstone off my back. And I felt for the first time in my life that I wasn't weighed down with sin. I've been sinning for 24 years, sinning for so long that I was lost in my sin. But that day when I invited Jesus into my life, he came in and cleansed me. You know, you can go home today, you can spend five hours in the bath. You could be an adulterer. You could be a, a thief. You could be a, you could be a homosexual, you could be a lesbian. You could be anything, you could be lost in your sin. And you can go home today, and you can spend five hours in that bathtub, and you'll still come out feeling the same. The guilt will still be there. The shame will still be there. The sin will be still there. And no matter how much you screw yourself, it'll still be there. But the minute you ask Jesus into your life, He'll wash you on the inside where suds can't touch, where the soap can't touch. 
they'll wash you up and make you clean on the inside and that's what we need, we need to be clean on the inside, we don't have to live a life condemned, we don't have to live a life where we're full of shame, we don't have to live a life where we're addicted to pornography, we don't have to live a life where we're stealing, we don't have to live a life where we're, we're cranking smack and heroin of a night time or we're just getting drunk, drunk because we're, we're bored with life. We don't have to live a life where we're in bondage and shackled by chains and lost in darkness. We can live a life free in Jesus' name. Jesus can break the chains that hold you. Jesus can break the power of the devil that holds you. And that's what, what we need. Every single one of us, we need them chains to be broken. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, you don't come and talk to somebody here and invite Jesus into your life. It's not about religion, it's about salvation. It's about, if you die today, where will you wake up? If you die, where will you spend uh, eternity? My brother was a Jehovah's Witness for, for 10 years. He was an elder, he used to preach in the, in the, in the uh, churches. And I used to try and share with him about Jesus, that Jesus was alive and he wouldn't listen to me because he had a different doctrine than me. And in 2005 he went to bed, he was 43 years of age, he never got out of bed and he just died in his sleep. Massive heart attack, just died. And he had devastated the family. And I tried so much to reach with him about the gospel of Jesus, the way, the truth and the life, and he wouldn't listen to me because he'd been indoctrinated. And he didn't know he was going to die at the point that I'm trying to get to you. He was physically fit. He was very athletic. He was running every day. And he, to everybody, he was fit and healthy. But he didn't know that particular day would be the last day of, of, for his life on earth. And at 43 years of age, he goes to bed and he dies and he doesn't wake up. And that's how life is. We're living today, but we don't know if we're going to die tomorrow. We're living today, we don't know if we're going to die in our sleep today, tonight. What happens if we die and we don't know Jesus as our Lord and Saviour? The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he will not enter the kingdom of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that those who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What happens if you don't allow yourself to be washed by the blood of Jesus and you die in your sin tonight? Where will you wake up? Where will you spend eternity if you die tonight and you've not received Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? It's not about religion. It's about being put right with God through the forgiveness of His Son, Jesus Christ. And unless you're washed with the blood of Jesus, you'll not spend eternity in heaven with God. We're all sinned. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. Every single one of us, each day, falls short of the glory of God. All of us. You know, sometimes we get angry for something, or we might say a word we shouldn't say, or we might look at a woman, you know, and think, oh, she's nice, and we all sin. But only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we confess our sins, is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of unrighteousness. I know when I got born again, listen to this, I'm going to finish here. A few years after giving my life to Jesus, I was sharing about Jesus with a friend of mine. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, Brendan, he said, you're only alive to tell the story because, because of your life. There was times that you stupid that I put myself in a coma and I'd be, I'd be out for out for the count. And there was a time when I was out for the count, I took too many girls. And uh, my brother, uh, my, my friend, and uh, I was dying. So my brother came and he, and he kind of rescued me. You know, he slapped me about the head and he got me to a safe place. And I asked him, Edward, that died in 2005, I says, I said, how long is it, Eddie? You know, I said, what day is it? He says, it's Monday. I said, no, it's not. I said, it's Tuesday. He said, bread. He said, this is the first time you woke up. He said, you've been asleep for a week. He said, you've not even up to your eyes. And I nearly died through stupidity. But before I got saved, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to die. I hated this life. 
I hated the things people had uh, put through as a young man. I hated the, the pain. I hate the things I'd, I'd gone through. And that's what it is for most people. Most people are not happy with their life because they're, they're bound in something or they're depressed or the suicide or they have problems and until you invite Jesus into your life the problems just have a hold of you but as soon as you invite Jesus into your life he breaks the power of darkness in your life Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the darkness Jesus was manifest to destroy the devil the devil and this is why we need Jesus in our life we need salvation I just want to tell you today you know that Jesus loves you so much when he was hung on that cross bleeding for you he was thinking of you when he was being whipped in the garden by the Romans and the flesh was hanging on off his back he was thinking of you while he buffeted him and hit him with a stick across the head he was thinking of you while they were saying, Hail King Jesus, he was thinking of you. While they were spitting in his face and mocking him, Jesus was thinking about you. And while he went to the cross to die and bleed, he was thinking about you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that those who believe in him should not die and have, have everlasting life. Jesus is alive. You know, death couldn't keep him. The grave couldn't hold him. On the third day, he, he rose from the grave. Jesus is alive. And the same power, the same grace, the same, the same thing he was doing on the earth while he was in the flesh, he's doing today. By his... And it's just, we need to be saved. Every single one of us needs to be saved. I really, you know, I don't even know if I'll see him again, you know, and I loved him not just as a brother, but I loved him as a friend, and when he died that day in his bed, 43 years of age, he didn't know it was last day on. you need Jesus, you need Jesus in your life to save you, because without the salvation of Jesus, there's no heaven, you know, if, uh, if you want to go to Gibraltar today, if you want to go to Spain today, you know, you've got to get your passport, take it to the airport, and off you go on the plane and you go to Gibraltar, you've gone to Spain because you get your passport. Jesus is your passport to heaven. Unless you've got Jesus in your life, you're not going to go to heaven. Jesus is the passport to heaven. No Jesus, no heaven. No Jesus, no heaven. Jesus is your passport to heaven. Jesus is your salvation. Jesus loves you so much. But while we were still sinners, he died on the cross. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Brendan. Do you want to say anything to anybody there about what you've been preaching, why you've been preaching today? What brings you out today, Pastor? Now, uh, we've come to Manchester today to, uh, to share with you about Jesus because there was a time in my life that I was lost. There was a time in my life where I used to lay in the bed and uh, truth is, I'd be, uh, I'd be in a stupor on drugs or something and I'd say, God, don't let me wake up tomorrow. Please don't let me wake up tomorrow. And uh, I was uh, 17, 18, even in my 20s. And uh, I wake up and I be angry. I say, Lord, why have you let me wake up? And that's how I was in life. The people that abused me as a young man did things they shouldn't have done to me. And I grew up a very, very angry man. And I was very hurt, very confused because of what happened to me. Uh, my parents should have took me to a, a doctor, but instead of taking me to a doctor, my back was packed and off I went and I was put in care. And uh, it was later on, when I, when I got into my twenties, I started to confide with a friend some of the things that took place. And I was a broken man, but very angry, very, very angry. And uh, for many years, uh, I wanted to punish some people. But then when I was 24 years of age, a friend of mine told me about Jesus. He told me that 
he doesn't do drugs anymore. We used to partner with drugs and crime and he told me that he doesn't do drugs anymore. And I went to church and I got saved. And the difference now than the difference back then is my prayer life has changed. I don't pray that God will take me. I pray that God will bless me. I pray that God will give me peace. I pray that God will give me joy. I pray that God would help me to love people. I pray that God would bless me life. My prayer life has changed from what it used to be when I was a young man. I pray for the people that have hurt me and the people that offended me. But I also pray for people's souls and, and share the gospel with people because I knew when I got saved and I invited Jesus into my life, I knew that something that took place on the inside. I knew that now I belong to God. I knew that the, God has placed His Holy Spirit in my life. And for the first time in my life, I was alive. I didn't need the drugs. I didn't need the crime. I didn't need to die. But I needed to live to tell people that they needed Jesus. I needed to live so I could share the message. I needed to live so I could tell people that Jesus bled on the cross. I needed to live because I found salvation. I needed to live because I had a peace. I've been, I received a peace in my heart that only God could give me. The peace in my heart when I invited Jesus in. And it wasn't about religion. It was about me being forgiven and being washed with the blood of Jesus. And I'm here today to, sh to share with you in Manchester what God did for me 25 years ago, 26 years ago. God can do for you. God can give you salvation. You don't have to be good to receive salvation. You come as you are. You can say, well, I'll get myself right, and I'll, I'll put the needle down. I'll get myself right, I'll put the bottle down. I'll get myself right, and I'll stop committing crime. You don't have to do all that. Come as you are to God. As clean as you are, or as bad as you are, God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. Just come as you are to God and invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus into your life. You could die today, and where will you spend the eternity? If you're depressed today, come here for prayer, we'll pray for you. We'll break the power of the devil that holds you. If you're bound on drugs today, come here, we'll pray for you. We'll break the power of the drugs that hold you. If you're bound in pornography today, come here and we'll break the power of lust in the name of Jesus. If you're depressed, come here, we'll pray for you. If you're lost, come here and receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. If you have a terminal sickness, come here, we'll pray that the Lord will deliver you from that sickness. Whatever you need from God, come and get prayer now, we'll pray for you, and we'll agree in the name of Jesus that God will deliver you from that bondage. And I'm being serious. There's nothing in your life that God can't break. There's no sin in life that God can't clean. There's no bondage in life that God cannot set free. There's no addiction in life that God can't break. There's no depression in life that God can't break. I challenge you, come here and see if God will not touch your life. If God will not break the powers of darkness in your life. I challenge you, come and receive prayer. And it's not that we are anything. It's just that we are sealed with the promise of God. It says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God loves you so much. And that's why we're in Manchester. To tell you, I, I finish with this. If I wouldn't have got saved when I was 24 years of age, I would have been, in the, I would have been dead. I wouldn't have been here today. Because my life was just going down, spiraling. I'm going de deeper and deeper and deeper and have been lost. And it was just going deeper and deeper and been s with sin and drugs. And I was just lost before God. And I just wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't have been here to tell the story. I put myself in, in, a, in a coma. And I guarantee you that I was just getting so far lost in my sin that eventually I wasn't going to make it. 
And just in the nick of time when I needed salvation grace, when I needed a lifeline, when I needed somebody to reach out to me, God chose my friend Billy to tell me about Jesus. Hallelujah.